welcome to Furious Driving. And you find me today at the wheel of a Rover 420 GSI Tourer. Yes, a two litre estate with a nice Recaro trim. I wasn't really planning on doing this, but I seem to have bought it. I'm unwittingly, accidentally, somehow, ticking every box on the option sheet of the Rover R8 options list, really. So I've already got a coupe, I've had a five-door pass through my hands, I've had the convertible, I've now got the bubble-shaped VI, never had a Tourer before. Also, we've had the 1.4, 1.6, got the 1.8, got the 2.0-litre, this is another 2.0-litre. Never had a 2.0-litre turbo, we'll come to that another day, I guess. I've never had a three-door, so there's still room to grow this ridiculous collection of Rover R8s, but yeah, I seem to be driving home in yet another R8 for the barn. Oopsie. Hello, welcome to Furious Driving. Now, you may remember this location from a film about 18 months ago, maybe a year ago, when we came up here to go and rescue a uh, hood frame for Quentin the convertible. Well, we've come back up here again today to go and get a bit for the coupe. And these are headlining because that has been drooping on my head for a long time. I can't see out that window anymore, frankly. But the owner up here who's got all these cars was willing to part with a 420 GSI Tourer, which is not a clever thing to say to me when I'm up here, surrounded by so many rovers and so much temptation. Let's go and have a look at it. This was in the greenhouse last time we came here. It is a Rover 420 GSI Tourer. These are astronomically rare. Although the paint is absolutely hideous, it's a pretty solid car. It's got a few spots, scabby bits, which is kind of typical of these things that the door bottoms go, but it hasn't really gone on the arches, which is where they often go. The tires old but pumped up and hold air so it'll get us home we did bring a pump with us just in case the lack of peel is immense that's really coming back it's going to want the windscreen coming out to get this rust spot here taken care of and also up here so that's an issue to deal with and the sunroof which i'm told isn't leaking lack of peel again just the worst so we'll be budgeting for paint on this car. A little bit of surface rust coming through where the lacquer's gone. Paint does become porous when the lacquer goes, so that's an issue. Same wheels as my coupe had originally as well. Nice interior on this, actually, actually nicer, I'd say. Nicer seats than the coupe had. Similar miles, about 10,000 miles less than the coupe. Oh, wood doors, lovely fade on the lacquer but it's not split I reckon we can we need to do the lacquer and peel on the coupe's dashboard as well we into a day doing both of them perhaps nice interior actually headlining uh, headlining drooping as they always do uh, I don't want to do another headlining hmm Interior looks nice, it's basically like my coupe's interior, but nicer, smells the same as well. Wonderful start. Oh, it's got a proper bonnet release, unlike the coupe. Ah, the standard weeping around the corner of the block, all T series do that. It's a two litre non turbo T series. Looks pretty straight in there. Might need to jump start it because I think the battery is a bit low and stood for a long time. Brought a jump start pack along and a spare battery. We'll see if it jump or starts off its own battery. If it starts, we'll take it home. Right. And it's alive. So yeah, that runs quite smoothly, doesn't it? So we'll bolt the battery on properly. We're away. This is pretty good. We'll fuel it up, do the paperwork, take it home and see what we think and then instantly regret it. <laughs> now we're looking on the fuel and the water and things. Yeah, it needs petrol quite badly. Well, the reason we actually came back here to the Rover Field of Broken Dreams is to get something for the coupe. It's had a wonky falling down collapsed headlining for a very long time. I tried to fix it during lockdown with uh, fiberglass on the back and that really didn't work. But uh, we've come back here because there is one which has donated it's headlining to my car. That's what we came up here for, but we're coming back with far more than we bargained for. As a reminder to me not to put the rear wiper on, the seller has kindly <laughs> attached the wiper rubber to the windscreen this way, but we'll do that later on. 
Oh, this is interesting. This is a 25 GTI, so it's kind of a spiritual continuation of my 200 VI, but with a new front face, looks a bit more MGZS-ish with those quad headlamps. Quite a cool car. How long have you been? Oh, lovely half leather interior. What's the mileage on this? Oh, it's digital, I can't see. This is lovely. 25 GTIs are properly rare cars now. Right. Oh, dead batteries. Jump, got the jump start pack again. That jump start pack is brilliant. Jobs are good. All right, we've done the documents online. It was clutch is biting right at the very bottom. I probably should have done a test drive on this car or something, really, shouldn't I? That clutch is right on the floor. Oh, okay. As long as it makes it back to the barn, we're happy. New wiper blades needed. So my shopping list is growing by the minute. It's fair to say I could probably have done some greater due diligence on this car. But it looks like a really, really solid machine. Beyond the few little scabs in the doors and some horrific tyre shudder, I came in here for new tyres. Um, it looks a really solid car. And the numbers of these cars, it's like the 200 VI and like the convertible. We're down to like double figures of these vehicles. So there's almost none left. So if ever I want to get hold of a, two, a 400 Tourer, and as I said a minute ago in the video, just by chance, if you're gonna get a Tourer, you really do need to go and get yourself a GSI. Um, this is the one to have. So. I'll be honest, it was a bargain for what it is, but the fact it needs paint means that most other people wouldn't have seen it as such. Because by the time you've done paint, you've probably spent as much as you would have done on a good one in the first place, but this one needs saving. We've got to save the Rovers. So A, save the manuals, B, save the Rovers. Actually, I think the tyres are just flat spotted because it's been sat around for quite a long time. It's two owners before the previous owner. It's a three owner car, effectively. The first owner was a lady. The second owner was her son. Third owner, about four years ago, was the uh, chap we just bought it from. And uh, he is a savior of Rovers. He's got lots of land there. And when a car comes up that needs a save, he will do it. He's kept it MOT'd and he's put a few thousand miles on it over the last couple of years, like less than a thousand miles a year. And we actually saw this car in the previous video and he did kind of say did I want it last year as well. And what with the 200 VI and the Crown Victoria and everything else, I've more or less forgotten about it, to be honest. Yeah, it's got an MOT on it until next week. So uh, we've saved, well, we've got it at the right moment because after next week it would have to be trailered or re-MOT'd. And with a car that's not done many miles, you never really know what you're gonna find. Having said that, with cars with loads of miles, you never know what you're going to find either. Oh, it's oh my god, it's just... It's conked out. What's wrong with this car? Okay. I think there might be bad fuel. We're pulling into the services anyway, but um, we might have to uh, put some services petrol in it. We stopped at the services on the way up and the price of the fuel was gobsmackingly bad. It was like one pound, 180 something, 186 or seven for, for diesel. I didn't look at the price of a super but I might drop a single gallon of V-Power in here. We put three gallons of, of E10 in the car just to get it going, because I thought that would be enough to get us home. Okay. Let's put some V-Power in, because and V-Power is a bit of a, a catch-all saviour for bad running, I've found. I oh, know we're, we're dead. And the battery's dead. Oh, damn it. Okay, we're gonna have to call in here. 
and change the battery. Well, that wasn't good. Back at the yard, I didn't change the battery over because I was thinking uh, if it jump start, it'll drive. Unfortunately, what I've found to my cost is that it will jump start, but it won't hold a charge either. So what's the wrong size? So as we went around the roundabout, it was cutting out. I was thinking at first, all it was, was the, uh, whoops. Sorry, the, the fuel blockage maybe, but I'm pretty sure it's this battery is completely and utterly dead. Oh, goodbye. But I did bring the battery, which was stolen from the 200 VI, which was in turn stolen from the W123. So hopefully we'll make it home on this one, assuming that is what the issue is, and we're not waiting for the AA to take us all the way home, which is a worrying possibility. Incidentally, I did want to spend the night at these services in the uh, Rover V8. That was part of the reason it got taken off the road in the first place. Uh, it conked out here and we actually made it coasted onto this very forecourt, actually by the pumps. Right, let's see if this thing starts. Yep, it runs. Okay, I think that may have been the problem. I'm going to stick a gallon of V-Power in, even at 199 pence a litre, wherever it is. Get this thing off the road, onto a pump, grab a coffee and get home. Yeah, I think that problem was just purely the pump, so the battery. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I've got fresh coffee. Oops. Let's get going. It's about 70 miles back to Kent. And we're going to head via the barn and hide this away. Not that I'm hiding this from Mrs. Furious, but I'm hiding this from Mrs. Furious. Actually, it does run nicer with both a new battery and V-Power. I know people are talking a lot about the cost of fuel at the moment, but that was literally the most expensive fuel I have ever bought in my life. Oh, my co-pilot is way behind me. Has he gone there? Oh, he's following me as well. Great, I'm following him to catch up with him and he's following me to catch up with me. Okay, I'm gonna have to go this way. I wonder if the sunroof works. Uh, famous stupid last words. Oh, that switch is really, really floppy. It just falls slightly and sets the wipers off. Oh, we've got a pop-up sunroof. I won't even ask if it closes again. All right, rotatable gear knob, that's always fun. Did I just say that was £9.60 for five litres of, of V-Power, which is the most expensive fuel I've ever bought in my life? I am very confident that this was just purely an issue with the battery being so dead that it couldn't hold a charge from the alternator. Oh, that's handy, that's the uh, locking wheel nut. Put that in there for safekeeping. Have I still got my colleague behind? I have. As soon as this dash has gone by. We can explore life in the fast lane. 40 miles an hour. Yeah, it's woken up quite nicely. Tyres seem to be unflat spotting themselves a bit. Yeah, it seems quite good, this car. Interior it really is very, very nice indeed. Got the good old five speed gearbox, which is quite a nice shift on this one. Let's put a few miles on it and see what we think in a, in a few minutes. Well, we're a few miles on. Let's see if this roof does close or not. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's a bit quieter. And we've made a few discoveries about the car. Firstly, the engine is as creamy as you like, 129,000 miles on it. And it absolutely sings, it's really sweet. So that's good. 50 miles an hour, the car judges like crazy, so I'm guessing either the disc rotors, the brake discs are warped, or, hang on, tap the brakes. Yeah, that went. 
that judders then, it needs new brake discs, but it stops okay, it just judders a bit. Um, and probably wants new tyres as well. I'll, I'll check the date codes on them. Probably should have done that before we set off. Other things I've realised, well, other things I'm finding out are learning to my cost. This wiper switch is basically about to fall apart, so I need to find a new one of those. The radio I thought might work, but it's not powering up, so that's not great. Fans work, which is good. And uh, yeah, the door cards and the seats are really nice. The wood in the doors is a-okay, it's lovely. A uh, bit of a fade and appeal on the dashboard lacquer wood, same as on the coupe, so I'm going to have to take both those bits of wood out and give them a bit of a, a treatment. They are lovely wood underneath though, but it's really proper wood underneath though. If you ever see one of these dashboards taken apart, there's proper thick, thick timber in there. It's amazing. Apart from the horrific paint, this is looking like a really nice car. I don't know what I'm more annoyed about. The fact the radio doesn't work or that I've paid £9 for a gallon of petrol. Yeah, this is properly smooth. There is a tiny risk. I might find that I like this car more than the coupe. That'd be awkward, wouldn't it? I wonder how it would look if I put the coupe's Cosmos wheels on it. Because they really did make the coupe look very good. I'm also thinking that roof rack, which I've got sat on the roof of the white Rover P6, not connected, would probably fit on here quite well, and it would look really quite nice. A wagon with a roof rack? That's a good look. Well, we've made it all the way to the Dartford Crossing, this amazing suspension bridge, running from Essex into Kent, land of home and freedom and all that kind of stuff, and where the barn lives, so we're not too far until we can park this thing up. It's run amazingly well. It's really, really smooth. The engine is just lovely. The ride is nice. It's got a nice kind of torque feeling to it as a 420, a two litre should do, but it's just comfortable. It's not crashy and bangy. It's quiet. The engine is really smooth. It's now we're doing 50 miles an hour. I can feel a little bit of judder again, but that has eased up a lot since we've been driving. We are now in Kent. Not long now. Two miles. Take exit two to merge onto the there you go, I'll do that. So the car is here, it fits in the barn. So I'm kind of excited, I'm really stoked. I've now finally got a 400 Tourer, which is an R8 model, which I've never owned and I always quite wanted. So it's great to actually have this thing here in the barn with me. The question is, have I done a stupid thing by buying it? If you're my wife, then we already know the answer to that. I don't need to really ask the question, yes, I've done a very stupid thing indeed. If you're one of us, a car person, then have I done a stupid thing? I think the answer is probably going to be a no. It was a pretty cool, exciting thing. Well done, you. Let me know in the comments. And how far should I take this? Certainly, it needs paint. The next thing I need to do to it is to go around it, get it on the jack, look underneath it, check it is MOTable and MOT ready. And uh, does it need anything? Is it going to need drop links and like everything else, or brake calibers like everything else? Once it's got an MOT on it, it's good for another year, then. What do I do then? How far do I take it? Do I leave it as it is, just paint over the rusty spots with some kind of primer so it doesn't go rusty? Do I matte black it, matte red it, go a proper rat look apocalypse car? It's too nice really to do that to, but since the paint is already completely shot, no harm in trying. Or do I have a go at painting it myself and how hard can it be? Yeah, I know the answer to that already. Well, let me know in the comments with your thoughts on this latest piece of stupidity and insanity. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little adventure with yet another rover, and uh, I'll see you again next time. Like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. You know what to do. And on, oh, buy some hats. See you later, bye-bye.